I dare you to look at somebody and say, if you run, I'm still staying. God made a way for my salvation in his son Jesus. He got me into the promised land. He put me in the family of God. I do have a heavenly father. I do have an intercessor and savior, great high priest. I do have a Holy Ghost comforter. I do have, have a constitution and a covenant from my God. I do know I'm blood washed, sanctified, spirit filled. I am a part of his family and I got a home in heaven and he said he'd never leave me nor forsake me. Be with me all the way. I'm going to hold my ground. He said he'd take care of me. He gave me a wife. He gave me daughters. He gave me grandchildren. He gave me sisters. He gave me a family. He gave me a church family. He gave me a ministry. You give me a house. You give me a car. You give me clothes on my back. You help me have food to eat. God provided all my needs. You think I'm going to let some stinking devil come along and steal my promises and my provisions? You think I'm going to let some devil come along and say you got to go. You got to go. I'm going to be like Shema. I'm going to say nobody's getting anything. Philistines, devils. Shema said You'll either take the field or you'll take me, but you can't have us both. Shema said, I'm going to preach over here. Shema said, Philistines, you may take the field or you may take me, but you won't get us both. Because I will not move. I'm standing on the authority of my God. Standing on the promises of God. I'll not move. I'll not yield. I'll not budge. God gave it to me. God promised it to me. This is my land. This is my promises. This is my inheritance. These are my blessings. And these are my peace. What's so big deal about a field of peas? You let God, or excuse me, you let the devil have one little thing. What? Y'all trying to preach my sermon. I love it. Tell your neighbor that. If you let him have one little thing, what's he going to do? Amen. Amen. You let the devil get his foot in the door, and he's going to walk right on through. Amen. Shema said, you're not getting anything. You're not getting the peas that I planted. You're not getting the land that I planted them on. And you're not getting me. You're not getting me. Because I belong to God. I found out about him through King David. And I belong to God, Jehovah. And he gave me a covenant, a covenant, a covenant. And God keeps his word. It never fails. His word never fails, never fails, never fails, never fails. I'm keeping God's word. Stood. Matthew sung my song this morning, fitted in perfectly with the message. And it does it again tonight. I may need you to sing it again in a few minutes. You stand. Stand. You may not feel like you got the energy to run, and you certainly don't want to run. So you stand. I'm not running. I'll die in my where I stand. Not giving up is what Shema said. It's my land, and he stood. He didn't give up. He didn't give in, and he didn't give out. Take me or this field, but you won't get us both. I'm not giving anything up for God, up, up that God gave me. I'm not giving anything up that God gave me. I'm not giving anything up that God gave me. Devil, you try to get all this that God gave me? First of all, I'm a child of God, so you're going to have to deal with my father. And he's done showed you what he can do. Then you'll have to deal with my Savior, Jesus Christ, seated at the right hand of the Father. And you already know what he can do. Because you got an empty key ring. Hallelujah. And then you're going to have to deal with the Holy Ghost. And that one a single solitary Holy Ghost has more power than all your evil ghosts put together. And you done found out, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And then you're going to have to deal with a holy angel that encamps round about those of us that love and fear the Lord. 
And then after that, you got to get through the blood that covers my soul. And you got to get through sanctifying power that's in my spirit. And then you got to get through my faith, and you're just not going to do it. Because I'm standing my ground, and I'll fight you, devil, over everything God's given me. If I never get healed again, never get another dollar, if I have every kind of disease, if I end up in horrible pain, I'll hold a God's unchanging hand until I see him face to face. It's my pea patch. You may let the devil have yours, but he's not getting mine. I said, it's my pea patch. I know what God's done for me. And that's why I'm telling you what he can do for you. If you are determined like Shema, tell somebody around you, it's my pea patch. And I'm not moving. Praise God. Tell somebody else that. Praise God. Come on, somebody help me here. Come on, tell somebody. Great God. Look across the aisle and shout it to somebody. It's my pea patch. And I'm not giving it up. And if you think that devil's going to try to get it, look who he's got to go through. Woo! Tell your neighbor, that's some good preaching he's doing. <laughs> I want to ask you this. What do you have worth fighting for? Look at all that you've got. Salvation, sanctification, the Holy Ghost, the home in heaven, Going to the rapture any second now. God's given you a family. God's given you friends. God's given you saints. God's given you all these things. You got something. Listen, at some point in your life, you must decide to stand for something. Why don't you let it be this? Why don't you let it be God? Why don't you let it be Jesus? Why don't you let it be the Holy Ghost? People stand for everything and fuss and cuss and fight their family and everybody else because somebody said something. My Lord, why don't you stand for something worthwhile? Why don't you stand for something that's worth, good God, why don't you stand for something that'll take you through this world and get you to heaven? Woo, it's got a good feel. I like this Bible, amen. Praise God. Shema stood in the field. Look at your neighbor and say, he stood then the next phrase says, he stood in the midst of the field. In the midst. I'm not giving up an inch of it. He stood in the middle of this field. He stood in the middle of it. Not giving any of it up for God or for the devil. I'm not giving up anything God gave me. And so he held on. Number three, the scripture says, and he defended it he defended it he stood he stood his ground he never yielded but he protected and he fought a good fight he fought a good fight we got to be willing to stand and fight for our pea patch every little thing and all the other things God's put in our life we got to be st willing to stand are you ready for this? And you may have to stand by yourself. All the Jews, they ran. Scripture said they, they flee. They ran. When the Philistines came, they ran. A troop of Philistines came and they all ran. Nobody there but him. David wasn't even around. All by himself. Didn't bother him. If it did, he didn't show it. He stood there and said, my ground, my lentils, and you can't have it. You're not having it over my dead body. You cannot have it. And God put an anointing on him because he said, God promised me this land. And when you make that stand and end up getting persecuted and get called names and get branded a Bible thumper, a holy roller, a tongue talker, a crazy psycho and all this stuff that a bunch of us know we've been referred to as. I said, Praise God, I don't care what they call me. I've been called so much stuff now, it don't bother me. Got over that a long time ago. Amen. Hey, if you're in sin, they're going to call you some names too. I just soon be on this side. 
Amen. Glory to God. Just to be on this side, be ready because you may be by yourself. You may have to stand and fight for yourself. Nobody going to talk me out of the Holy Ghost and tell me Pentecost is not real. It didn't stop in the first century. It didn't stop. It's still been going all along. I got historical data to prove it, but more than that, I got him in my heart. Glory to God. Glory to God. Bunch of churches out there saying all kinds of stuff. And I, I love them. I believe there's a lot of them are saved. I don't believe all of them. I believe a lot of them are saved. I don't believe all of them are saved in our church. I believe most of them are. And I'm trying to get them, the rest of them get saved. Amen. But I'm just trying to tell you something, though. The fact is, we're going to have a mix no matter where. But I'm just saying this. It's another point on my outline. Let me go see what it was. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was standing by himself. That's where I was. You knew that. Why didn't you tell me? He was standing by himself. And you got to realize that people can call your name. Some of them do all kinds of stuff. But listen, you got to tell them, no, we don't, we don't handle snakes over here. But if you come over, we'll handle you. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Fella told me, he said, some guy come up and said, oh, you're a Pentecostal. He said, yeah, I'm a Pentecostal pastor. Oh, so y'all handle snakes at your church. He said, no, we don't, but we're, we got a new program in our children's church to where we're training them with worms. He deserved that, didn't he? Praise God. Amen. Where's the children's church? Okay. Amen. Praise God. I'm telling you what, there'll be times they'll call you every quit your thing, but you're going to have to take your stand. Call me what you want. I just know this. My God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. I know he washed my sins away. I know he filled me with the Holy Ghost. I know heaven is awaiting. And I know God answers prayer. And look at everything he gave me. And I'm not about to deny him. And I'm not about to walk away from his word. And I'm not about to walk away from his church. And I'm not about to walk away from my allegiance to him. I belong to him. Good God Almighty. I belong to him. And I'm going to keep him. And I'm going to stay true to him. And I'm going to serve him until my life. Last breath. Somebody help me praise him right there if you believe you're going to do that. Woo, y'all letting me have all the fun. My God, what a Savior. Thank you, Jesus. He defended it. You got to make sure you take your stand. And the last thing, it was a time, it was a time of great conflict. It was a time of great courage. And finally, it was a time of great conquest. The scripture said, and he slew the Philistines. He slew the Philistines. He killed all the enemy. Don't say one was left. Are you watching this? He killed, he slew the scripture said he slew the Philistines. He killed all the enemies. Not one was left. Too many have been just slapping your enemy around and not killing him. Now I'm talking about the spiritual devil. Too many just been slapping him around. You can rebuke him one service and you don't come back for two weeks. You'll have a half a dozen more with you. And I'm talking demons, not people. And that's why so many struggle. That's why so many struggle. But I'm going to tell you, the scripture tells us to cut his head. What did David do? He took the slingshot and he put the stone in it and he whirled it around and the Holy Ghost got on him. And that arm went around like a helicopter blade. And that stone went out of there like a, like a cannon. And it hit that giant in the right spot. Holy Ghost directed stone missile. 
knock that sucker down on the ground, knocked him out. Hit him in the right place. God knows what he's doing. If you and I will take a stand, God will take care of the rest. If you and I will take a stand, if you and I will stand up to the devil, stand up to the demon, stand up to the terrorists, stand up to the demonic forces that are trying to disrupt your nerves, tear up your heart, mess up your life, and keep you in turmoil, I'm telling you, there's a way maker. There's a burden bearer. There's a peace speaker. There is a God in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Glory be to God. David didn't stop there. Once that giant hit the ground, what did he do? He ran over there to him and took the devil, I mean the giant, took his sword, cut his head off with his own sword. We just do good to knock them down. And then we shout on the way home. And tomorrow there he is again. Take this blessed book. Cut his head off. If another one is sent to you, cut his head off. If another one comes at you, cut his head off. If another one comes at you and brings his five brothers, cut all their heads off. I'm saying use the sword is what I'm trying to say. Use the word. Use the sword. If God be for us, what? No power greater than that. Hey, greater is he that is in us than? Is it true? Is it real? Do you believe it? Then use it and slay your enemy. Every stinking devil has got on your nerves. Everyone has attacked your health, attacked your marriage, attacked your family, attacked your finances, attacked your nerves, attacked your mind, got you all bent out of shape. Shut up, devil. Take your mess and get out of my way. I come against, oh, you come against me with sickness, disease, and finances, family problems, and turmoil. I come against you in the name of the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I command you to take your mess and get out of my life. Get out of my life, devil. I dare you to do that right now. I dare you to do it. Throw your hand up with your word in it and say, devil, I command you to get out of my life. Woo! Stand with me. How many of you young people got the Holy Ghost? I want you to get out of your pew and come up here real quickly. All you young people got the Holy Ghost. You know because he spoke through you this weekend. Help me. Line up, you get on this side. Ten got the Holy Ghost, fifteen got refilled. What dozen got saved? Any of these parents out here anywhere? Where are you? Where are the parents to these? Hold your hand up. Let me see. Where are the parents to these kids? Look at two or three people around you and say, that's my pea patch. Come on. That's my pea patch. And the devil's not getting my children. 
I got a prayer covering over them. I got a church praying over them. I got prayer warriors over them. They're in the altars. They're under the blood. They got the touch of God. Where's the rest of you young people? Come up here. Rest of you young people. Come on up here. Praise God. I want our young people up here. Some of them didn't get to go on a trip, but they're still here right in here with them and got the goods. Got the goods. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to help me. And what I think we'll probably need to do is probably come down that side over there. How many of you young people know God gave you the Holy Ghost for a reason? Do you know that supernatural power? Did he speak through you? Tell me. Talk to me. Did you feel something? Was it supernatural power? Have you ever felt anything anywhere close to that before? You know it's of God. It's good. It's great. It's powerful. Miracle work. Did you know the devil is afraid of it? Did you know demons are afraid of it? You don't have to be afraid of witches, warlocks, all kinds. You don't even have to be afraid of black cats. Glory to God. You blood washed, sanctified, got the Holy Ghost. You can rebuke every devil that comes against you, and he'll bounce off you like a bounce off a windshield, or white rain bounces off a windshield. Praise God. I want you, when these folks start coming through, and I want you to start praying right where you're at, then I want you to come through here and let us, let I, I'll lead the way. I will lead the way for these young people to lay hands on us. They're full of faith, full of fire. They're more excited than some of us have been in years. And we need to get what they've got. I'm excited about it. And a lot of us are excited about it. But everybody needs to be excited about it. But folks, we got to stand our ground. And to stand our ground, look who we got standing with us. Look who we got standing with us. Matter of fact, take a gander across the congregation. Look who you got. How many standing with all of us? How many of you are going to fight with the rest of us? You're going to stand your ground. Come on, hold your hand up. I'm going to stand my ground for my pea patch. Amen. How many of you are going to stand and help the rest of us? You're not running. You're going to work with us. You're going to pray with us. We're going to fight that devil. We're going to see our loved ones saved. We're going to see people getting the Holy Ghost. We're going to see people get sanctified. We're going to see people get healed and delivered. We're going to see people get joy and peace and blessings and anointings. Woo. Slip your hands up right now and ask God to fill you with enough strength and power and anointing to stand in the middle of your pea patch and not let any of your blessings get away. Come on, pray that way right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, 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 my God, anoint us with strength, courage, power, boldness, determination, commitment, to stand in the middle of our pea patch, stand in the middle of all the bountiful blessings you put in our lives and not give an inch, not give an inch, not give an inch, not give an inch for anything to take what you blessed us with. My God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now, I need every one of you that will follow me over this way. Come down this side. If you come down this aisle, you can come down this aisle right here. Just walk down this aisle too and you come right over here, but let's go in this way. And I want you to let these young people lay hands on you. Come on. We're going to pray that God will anoint them. Amen. Young people, get a hold of each other's hands. Pray God, fill us with the greatest anointing we've had this week. Go ahead and pray that right now because you're about to lay hands on people and let that Holy Ghost work. We're going through this line praying for God to help us stand in the promises he's given us. What do you do? When you turn all you can and seems like it's never All right, young people. Don't you let anybody get through this line without you putting your hand on them and pray for them in the name of Jesus. When you've given your all and it seems like you can't make it through, well, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand and watch 
the Lord see you through. It's after you've done all you can, you just stand. Tell me, how do you handle the guilt of your past? Tell me, how do you deal with the shame? And how can you smile while your heart has been broken and filled with pain, with pain? Tell me what do you feel when you've given your all and it still seems like you can't make it through? Child, you just stands when there's nothing left to do. You just stand and watch our Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can, you just stand and be sure. Be not entangled in the bondage again, you just stay and endure your Cause God has a purpose, yes, and God has a plan. Tell me what you do when you've done all that you can, and it seems like you can't make it through. Oh, child, you just stand, you just stay, and you've got to stand. Don't you take him up, stand through the storm, and stand through the rain, stand through the hurt, stand through the pain, and don't you burn. After you've done all that you can, after you've done all that you can, after you've gone through the hurt, after you've gone through all the pain, after you've done all you can, after you've gone through the storm. When you prayed and you cried, when you prayed and cried, when you prayed and you cried, after you've done all that you can, you just done all you can and 
It seems like it's never enough. And what do you say when your friends turn away and draw? Tell me what do you give when you've given your all and it seems like you can't.